Thank you. Right, so for our, our, our next presenter, we have Chris Hall from the University of Hull. Okay, good morning. I'm here to talk about the uh, experience that we've had in implementing our institutional repository at the University of Hull over the last um, eight years or so. Um, the title is Towards a Mature Multipurpose Repository. It's basically because we want a mature repository. We want a multipurpose repository. And this is the direction we're going in order to work towards that. We were inspired in when setting up our repository by um, the, an article that Cliff Lynch wrote in 2003 where he said, I believe that a mature and fully realised institutional repository will contain works of faculty and students, both research and teaching materials, also documentation of the activities of the institution itself in the form of records of events and performance of the ongoing intellectual life of the institution, etc. The bits in red we've highlighted are the ones that we've sort of focused on, which I'd like to address in this morning's um, um, presentation. And they've been the focuses of some of the activities that we're going to take in order to have the, address that multi-purpose aspect of our repository. Um, so starting off with an institutional repository. So we took the view that one institution, one repository, it's a question mark, it's a continuing debate I suppose, but we took the view that repositories are infrastructure and therefore uh, it's useful to have only one of them so we only have one to maintain long term. We recognise content doesn't sit in silos and if you have it all in one place you can cross fertilise its use better. Um, we have five principles uh, which we looked at about you know, to choose a repository, it should be content agnostic, it should be standards-based, preferably open standards. It should be scalable. It should understand how pieces of content relate to each other. And it should be manageable with limited resource. Uh, our choice was of Fedora because we felt that it met all of those criteria. Um, it is content agnostic, it is standards-based, it is scalable to, within reason. Um, it does understand how pieces of content relate to each other. And with help from the community, we can manage it with limited, limited resource. And that involvement with the community was a very deliberate decision and a very powerful one for us. So in terms of managing content, we manage the work of faculty and students. We do have research outputs, we're looking to develop that further, but that has not been the main driver for our repository. We manage research data, uh, we archive event outputs, more of that later. The students, we disseminate their theses and dissertations, and although not student-written, we do hold exam papers and handbooks, and we have granular security around all of this. We see very much the repository as being embedded within the institution by trying to link it to other systems. So we've carried out work in uh, integrating it with our VLE, which, for which we use Sakai. We've tried to integrate it with SharePoint. And we're also embedding it with our um, CRIS, which is based on Converis. Talking about other content we manage in the repository, we records of events and performance. We um, hold uh, audio files of discussions with authors and creative writing classes. We have inaugural lectures. We archive the University Learning and Teaching Conference. And we also have been doing some tests around campus-based e-publishing, integrating with open journal systems, of which more later today in the Fedora user group. Experimental observational data, we're tiptoeing into data management, uh, because uh, I think they're like a lot of people. Uh, we've done some work around data management planning with our history department, of which there was a poster which you can still see upstairs. Um, and the EPSRC roadmap has been very powerful for us in terms of uh, enabling conversations. So we've taken the holistic view, trying to sort of capture all those different areas of activity um, that we've just outlined. One thing that's been hugely helpful to us has been the development of the Hydra project and our ability to be able to be flexible in the way we use our repository for all these different purposes. Hydra itself is um, all of those things. It's a repository solution in terms of there is a software implementation you can download and use. But it is also very much a community around trying to develop different ways in which you can use an institutional repository. But it's also a technical framework to allow you to do what you need to do for your repository needs, and it is open source. We want to, just a couple of examples of what it enables us to do. We can adapt the content. So the item on the left is a journal article, and that's that we can determine how that's displayed, presented, and managed within the repository. On the right is a data set where we've been able to do some very different stuff in the way that we present it in order to provide added value to that material. We can also organise the content in different ways. There's an underlying <coughs> way of organising all the content using structural sets. Uh, but we can also pick and choose content to provide display sets so we can do exhibitions, we can provide coherence around collections of different pieces of content. All of this is enabling us to fulfil the institutional strategy. So these are all statements from our institutional strategy. 
um, in terms of impact globally through the disseminating the uh, outputs and from research, trying to interconnect research and teaching through bringing the content together, enhancing the learning environment by embedding the repository content in different systems, etc., etc. Looking forward, we're looking to do more about library search integration. So we provide access to our repository, our catalog, and our, our, all the different articles through various different resources. But how do we combine those in the most efficient way to provide the best experience to our students and the staff within the university? We're also looking at digital archives management. We were involved in the AIMS project, which produced a model on the management of born digital archives. And we're working with our archivists uh, through events and advocacy to try and raise profile and awareness of how better as a community archivist can deal with this content. And also they're looking to use Hydra, the repository, to develop tools to enable us to put that model into practice. Finch outcomes. For those of you in the UK, you may be, aware, of course, very much aware of the Finch report that came out a few weeks ago. To my mind, although whatever you may think about it, it offered a very valuable role for repositories in terms of their supporting capability, management of grey literature, theses, dissertations, link between data and publications, etc. Very much in many ways an opportunity, which I think is there to be exploited. So, looking towards the future, our repository is still a work in progress. It is maturing, rather than mature, but we're getting there, we're moving forward. We've been able to apply it to a range of purposes, so it is multi-purpose, and it is a repository for the institution as a whole. I'd like to say thank you, great thank you, thanks to my colleagues, Simon Lamb and Richard Green, without which all of this work would never have taken place. Uh, the repository is there, Hydra and Hull, and for more information on the Hydra project that I'm pinned it, there's the website at the end. Thank you very much. Okay, can we uh, uh, take a, a question for Chris? Thanks, Chris. Um, do you handle much multimedia content in the repository? And if yes, how have you found that? Um, we've, oops, I suppose, we're starting to do. I mean, we have those audio files of all the talks we did with um, all the conversations with authors, audio files. Um, in terms of actually maintaining the files in the uh, repository, creating records so they can be discovered and used by other people, that fairly straightforward. But we do have issues about, I suppose, the delivery of the content. So, I mean, it's easy for people. We can provide the files so that people can access them, but largely through download at the moment. And we want to be able to enhance the interface so people can simply play the files through the, company, the repository as well. And there are, I mean, we know of other people in uh, the Hydra project doing functionality that would enable that, which we want to be able to take advantage of uh, further down the line. Yes. Okay, one more. Thank you. Um, hi, Chris. Uh, my question is about your protected area of the repository. I think you mentioned like exam papers and student handbooks are in there. I wondered if how you present that to, to users, whether it's transparent to people, but all the content is being served from one place, and whether there's a tension in an open repository with a protected area. Um, well, the, the way it operates is that, uh, I mean, if you go to the, the repository interface, then you just see the open content, but there is a login option. And if you go to the login option, it's integrated with the institutional single login system. So if you're a member of the institution, you quite op you very rapidly recognize you can access you can log in and you will get additional content through that route. And that's how we advocate it. The repository is also integrated with our institutional portal. And if you actually just go into the portal, you're logging in using the same system. And by virtue of that, you access the, the repository and you access all the internal content as well. Um, and indeed, most of our accesses from students comes through the portal because that's how they, ex they first experience and come across the repository. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Chris.